Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm John Zombro, and thank you for joining me today. In today's video, we're going to discuss lifelong training. And this is one of the topics in our Peak Performance Masterclass series, and it's very popular with the clients and athletes that I work with. I'm gonna give you a few tips that can be used at any time in the lifespan and also some perspectives on how you can progress as an athlete through your own life journey. First of all, we want to take a look at workload. And workload is simply the intensity times the duration of a training session or workout. And what we're really referring to here are those workouts of purpose or intention. Sometimes I call them something of substance, SOS, or a fitness maker workout. And that's what really builds our conditioning, our capabilities, our, our uh, status to uh, be able to deliver peak performances. So not every workout uh, is a fitness maker, but the ones that matter the most are indeed those. And it's really critical to always keep that workload in between the minimum effective dosage or amount that we can absorb and also the maximum absorbable limit which our bodies will establish for us. And these things are dynamic. Uh, a lot of this depends on how well you're sleeping and eating and managing overall stress in the life. But we wanna make sure that the training, which is a stressor we can manipulate, is appropriately scaled to give us the best responses and adaptations in our bodies. Next up is recovery. And manipulating or finessing recovery is really an art form for any athlete at any stage in the journey. But as we mature, one of the things that's uh, most essential to keep in mind is we want to have the appropriate amount of intensity in our targeted workouts or those fitness maker workouts. So in other words, uh, whatever the most appropriate intensity is for the desired outcome. It could be high intensity, yes, or it may be low intensity, but we want to hit those targets and preserve that in training. The maturing athlete will often find that decreasing the duration or overall length of a session slightly while maintaining the targeted intensity is effective at uh, uh, keeping the gains coming and avoiding breakdown and injury, and also slightly decreasing frequency or how many times in a given training cycle, such as a week, that one performs these uh, fitness maker workouts. So those are uh, two key areas, workload and recovery that we want to manipulate. Uh, now the other thing that I'd like to offer up today is how I help folks to go through their life journey. And what I have here is some very uh, generic suggestions uh, regarding uh, young, middle-aged, and mature athletes. And first of all, we can say that these ages are indeed uh, general suggestions and they may not apply to every person. But let's say you have a youth athlete at 15 to 30 years of age. When we know the strengths and weaknesses of the athlete, and those are those five categories that we've talked about here on the channel before, that is speed, power, strength, endurance, and agility, can be presented in any order. Well, when we know uh, what are our relative strengths, which of those categories are we really high performing in, and then what are the weaknesses or areas where we may be deficient or need to shore up a tad, we can then think of how a young athlete can essentially put a maximum amount of emphasis or time and training and effort on the strengths and a small or minimum amount on the weaknesses, largely because uh, youthful vitality tends to make those perceived or observed weaknesses less pronounced. And also, we just give them enough attention so that they don't uh, deteriorate performance or, uh, or, or contribute to uh, any health issues. So that's how we do the young athlete regarding strengths and weaknesses. We use a max-min principle. Now, uh, in middle age, and again, if you accept those numbers at 31 to 60, we're probably going to use a mod mod or moderate moderate emphasis. So we've been developing uh, now the the strength for 
uh, let's say as much as 20 years, uh, we can now put a moderate emphasis on that strength, but we need to pay a little bit more attention to our, uh, our deficiencies, uh, such as things in mobility or things in um, endurance or overall strength, which can impact not only our daily lives, but especially our athletic performances. And then lastly, and this may come as a shocker to you, uh, a mature athlete, let's say they've been a lifetime athlete, and I hope that's the case, well, at 60 plus, you've got 40 or more years of honing and developing those assets, those strengths. And so they're not going to go away. And it takes very little effort to keep them tuned up. But now the weaknesses are essential, or it is essential that we address these weaknesses and don't let them shut us down from being a functional athletic human beast over that entire lifespan. So that's my perspective on lifelong training, and it fits into some of the things that we've discussed uh, previously about how to personalize your training and how to make the workouts more effective, how to uh, use a, a wise system for programming and assessing your workload and volume. And now this uh, perspective hopefully gives you some ideas on how to get through your life journey, uh, staying healthy and achieving the best performances possible. Thanks again for joining me. This is Coach Jay-Z signing out from The Lifetime Athlete. And if you'd like to have more uh, information or resources, please, by all means, check out thelifetimeathlete.com, where you'll find hundreds of videos, podcasts, and articles to help you in your journey.